Okay, so the Lakers lost to the Grizzlies without Ja. Yeah. If they can't beat the team, a team without their best player, how are they ever going to win the finals? Okay. So do you think you overreacted to game one? No, I didn't. Okay. But I will tell you right now, this will be a good test case for whomever your favorite media personalities are, whoever you consume, and how whether or not they understand how the NBA works or whether or not they are simply trying to give you the hottest Lakers take imaginable. Here's why. Four teams went on the road and won game one of their playoff series. There's eight series. In four of them, the home team won game one and game two. So that would be, of course, Denver, Philly, Boston, and who am I leaving out as the other one? The Denver, Philly, Boston. Is that it? Maybe that's it. The Those teams went took care of home court. Those series are 2-2, right? Oh, and Sacramento, light the damn beam. That's who I was forgetting. I knew it was four of them. Four teams lost their opening game of the playoffs as the home team. The Grizzlies. The Suns, the Bucks, and the Cavs. What did all four of those teams then do for game two? They are desperate. The other team relaxes a bit because they had to steal one. They already stole one. All four of those teams, the Clippers, the Bucks, the, the Cavs, and the Grizzlies came back and the Suns, pardon me, and won game two to salvage a split. Now, you might say, yeah, Nick, but the Grizzlies didn't have John Morant. I understand that. But the Grizzlies are more equipped to play without John Morant than any team in the league is equipped to play without their best player. Over the last two seasons, with Ja, they win 63% of their games. Over the last two seasons, they have played 50 games, 5-0 games, without Ja. The winning percentage actually goes up a tick. They win 66% of their games. Now, are they better without Ja? Of course not. But are they more equipped than any other team in the league to win without their superstar, of course they are. Because they ju- they are such a great defensive team. They don't have to score a ton of points to win games. They are tough. They are well coached. Now, does that so what am I concerned about from last night's Lakers game? It is not that oh my god, you lost to the team without Ja. It is that D'Angelo Russell after the game and he's been brutal lately. After a 2 of 11, five point game, was asked about being a point guard for this team. And he was like, I'm not a point guard. For this team, I'm not a point guard. I'm just a basketball player. He already seems, uh, let's call it, a little annoyed with his role, which is frustrating because right when he got back to the Lakers, he played so well in his role. They were already talking about having him be the long term solution at point guard instead of Kyrie Irving. The other reason this is concerning, if you're the Lakers, when it comes to Angelo Russell, last year in the postseason with the Minnesota Timberwolves, D'Angelo Russell, 12 points a game on 33% shooting. This year, through two games of the postseason, 12 points a game on 32% shooting. They need him to be better. I think a lot of people today are going to be criticizing Anthony Davis. He was bad offensively. It was not. However, you cannot say he wasn't locked into yesterday's game because once again, he was dominant defensively. The reason the Lakers lost yesterday was because D'Angelo went two of 11. They got nothing, absolutely nothing off their bench aside from Rui, who once once again was excellent, and they couldn't hit a shot. 
And then you add to it that Anthony Davis went 4-14. of 14. That's not a recipe to win the game. So the Lakers relaxed a bit. The Grizzlies were desperate, just like, by the way, Clippers relaxed a bit. The Suns were desperate. The Heat relaxed a, a bit. The Bucks, without Giannis, were desperate. The Knicks relaxed a bit. The Cavs were desperate. It is very rare the road team wins both of the opening two games. So, no, it is not panic time in Los Angeles, and I think you will see a sense of urgency in game three for the Lakers that you did not see in game two. What's your follow-up, Diora? What were your thoughts on Dylan Brooks' comments towards your bestie? Okay. So, Dylan Brooks... Your enemy now? No, he's not my enemy. Listen, he's a cartoon character. Dylan Brooks... Listen, I... There is a long line of Dylan Brooks's. The first was Deshaun Stevenson, who tried to chirp at LeBron. And then LeBron came out and said, uh, this would be like Jay-Z replying to Soldier Boy. Then, because of that, Soldier Boy himself showed up to the next game. Then, because of that, Jay-Z dropped a diss track on Soldier Boy and Deshaun Stevenson. That, of course, ended with LeBron dispatching of Deshaun Stevenson and the Washington Wizards. Then, the next Dylan Brooks there was, was Lance Stevenson. Lance Stevenson chirped at LeBron. They're not related. What's up, Diora? The name sounds really familiar. Lance Stevenson? You maybe have have seen him play. I mean, he just... No, like, from something else. Okay. His name was in a song. So, uh, well, Deshaun Stevenson's name was in a song. Lance Stevenson, maybe his name was in a song. Lance chirped at LeBron including during a playoff game once, blowing in LeBron's ear to try to get under his skin. That, of course, went with LeBron repeatedly sending Lance Stevenson's Pacers home for the playoffs. Then there was Draymond Green, the best version of any of these players. Mm -hmm. Draymond Green chirped at LeBron and then punched LeBron, punched, slapped LeBron in the groin. That ended with Draymond being suspended LeBron winning three straight, and then Draymond literally crying in the parking lot after losing the finals, calling Kevin Durant and asking him to come save him. It was in a Nicki song. Oh, it was in a Nicki Minaj song? You just found it? With Lance Stevenson? Yeah. Okay, there you go. So, and now there's Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks said LeBron's old. Dylan Brooks said that he doesn't respect anyone until he scores 40 on him. Dylan Brooks had all this chirping. And as soon as that happened, everyone on Twitter was like, oh boy, can't wait to bet the LeBron over props for game three. He's going to score 40. He's going to score 50. None of those people know what they're talking about. No one knows who they're talking about except for you, right? Well, when it comes to certain things, you're not supposed to agree on that. When it comes to certain things, it would appear I'm the only person. You could infer that that, hold on that I'm the only person that has watched LeBron for the last 20 years. The idea that because Dylan Brooks talk trash, LeBron is going to change his approach in the playoffs is utter nonsense. It won't happen. Blasphemy. It's it's a it's it, it is it goes against who LeBron always has been as a basketball player. He's not going to all of a sudden make it a one-on-one battle with him and Dylan Brooks. It's just not going to happen. Now, if he gets the opportunity late in the series when the Lakers have full control to embarrass Brooks, will he? Maybe. But is he going to go out there and say, I'm going to go get my 40? No, not who he is as a player. And by the way, I got no quarrel with Dylan Brooks. This is who he is. He's a cartoon character. He's a wrestling heel. A, the, the, He's a wrestling eel. He, yeah, in wrestling, a face no, is no. a good guy. A heel is a bad guy. Uh, and that's who he wants to be. And that's how he's carved out his niche in this league. He's a good defender. He's an abysmal offensive player. And he is the kind of emotional support of this team. But it's not going to end well for him. But I don't think it's because LeBron's going to go out and try to score 40 in game three. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. 
Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts, or just click the link in the description below.